Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to a From the Depths tutorial, the how to build big tutorial, how to build crafts which are large, big, or even massive. And so I should mention that this commentary is not live, what you are seeing on screen right now is a times two uh, speed build of a battleship I made specifically for this tutorial. It took me a hot second, but it was worth it. It is the largest thing I've ever built. It still doesn't have a name. Uh, at its finished point, it is almost uh, 40,000 blocks. So, very big. And it's an example of how to build big. And we'll be illustrating everything I'll be saying. So, here are 10 tips in no real particular order on how to build large craft in From the Depth. So, uh, first off... Uh, everyone, and by everyone I mean everyone who plays From the Depths, or the, I guess everyone in general, but specifically Depthians in this case, has a different definition of what constitutes big. Some people think that um, uh, once you start to get over 10,000 blocks, that's a pretty big thing. Some say 20,000. My personal definition is like 30,000. Once it's over 30,000, I think it's quite big. But uh, there are people who can build craft that are up to 70,000 blocks and they think, yeah, okay, that's, that's big. And medium is like 40,000, stuff like that. And honestly, the uh, best definition for what is big in front of the depths is what makes your CPU uh, start to panic and smoke and give off sparks. Which means uh, the better your PC, uh, the bigger, uh, well, the bigger your definition of big is. Mine is, well about 30,000 blocks. But there's other things that can make a, a craft uh, be a PC hog, so... I don't know, it is a rough definition, but keep in mind that when people talk about their big craft, their definition of big might not be the same as yours, but uh, thankfully all the things I'm about to tell you uh, work regardless of what your definition of big is. So the first one is, uh, or I guess the second one, is kind of counterintuitive, and that is learn to build small first. And I've made a tutorial ages ago on how to build things small. Um, might need to update it at some point. I don't remember what I said in it. Um, but uh, if you practice building crafts which are small, uh, that means two big things. Big things. <laughs> it means uh, that you can build more craft, because smaller craft take uh, less time to build, just as a matter of course. Which means you get more practice building complete, efficient vehicles. And shrinking things down forces you to practice efficiency and the more efficiently you can build small the better your larger vehicles will be just because you can just scale up uh, what works well at a small scale and just make it bigger and it'll work better and you can even do a, a small prototype of the final craft that you want just to test the principles and performance and just see how the block layout uh, works well because if it works well at a small scale it's pretty much guaranteed to work at a large scale as well, just to see, okay, where do you put more armor? Uh, how do you arrange turrets? How do you put, where do you put uh, the detectors and stuff like that? Um, what kind of defenses work best um, when layered on top of each other and stuff like that? And number three is, and this is something that I personally am really bad at, so uh, I'm not a good example of this, is plan ahead. So, I actually did manage to do it somewhat uh, for the unnamed battleship uh, being built in the background right now, but knowing what you want ahead of time uh, means you will make less mistakes and you'll need to backtrack and um, rebuild stuff less. So, if you think um, to yourself, okay, say I want something that has uh, two big turrets and then a bunch of secondaries and I want a superstructure that goes like forward command post and then stuff in the middle and then a second command post in the back uh, with detectors like here, here, here and here and if you want a lambs uh, on it, if you want seawiz on it and all that kind of stuff if you plan that out ahead uh, you can do uh, the following point which is build and optimize individual systems first so you can test them all second uh, all separately to make sure that they all do what you want so you can make um, a good uh, big engine, for instance, a big efficient one or powerful one, be it fuel engine or steam. You can test uh, individual turrets, you can test shells, um, you can build active defense systems, uh, just, you know, 
make sure they do uh, what you want them to do, that they can accomplish the thing that you want uh, to accomplish. Um, and it allows you to keep the track of the dimensions of everything, because it means that, like, okay, so I need this much, say, general purpose processing power in order to have this many detectors on my turret or my superstructure, so I need an AI compartment which is about ye big, I need, if I want to power a LAMS which is this big, uh, then I need an engine that's at least this big, and stuff like that. So individual systems first. And that leads smoothly into the fifth point which is making prearranged prefabs. Prefabs are your best friend in general really in From the Depths, but especially when you're building larger craft, and it is a huge time saver. Uh, especially with engines, uh, sections of hull, armor schemes, uh, propulsion, uh, superstructures, and more things like that, detection arrangements, stuff like that. If you make them ahead of time and just get in the habit of using uh, simple things that you know work, and you just load up a refab and slap it down, that'll save a huge amount of time. And the same goes with sub-objects. I have a particular uh, azipod uh, spin block, which I use all the time simply because I've made it already, it's there, I can just load it up and pop it on wherever I want. Um, same things, I have uh, two... Um, I have an armored uh, camera array, and I have an armored radar array, and that I just slap them uh, wherever, uh, because they just, you know, they do what I want them to do, I know they do, and it means I can just pull them out whenever I need them. And also... On a side note, it kind of means that you develop your own style, because you use the same prefab over and over again. Uh, your craft will look more like yours, and that's not really practical, but it does feel very nice. And so basically, whenever you find yourself using a certain arrangement of blocks uh, over and over again, make a prefab on it. And I haven't actually done that uh, with all of the blocks I use over and over again. For example, there's a kind of slope staggering that I don't think is really on display uh, with this build, but it's like an alternating between straight beams and 4 meter slopes just to get this lovely smooth smooth yet jagged uh, slope coming to a point which makes a beautiful canoe shape and I really need to prefab that because I use it all the time. Uh, speaking of doing things all the time, uh, as you're building, test what you've made often. Uh, because that is the quickest way to check that things uh, still work the way you think they should. And in particular, um, From the Depths is a live game, so to speak, which means the devs update it. And sometimes, we're not always paying attention and updates kind of like catch us off guard and like they sneak up on us. And so if an update has done that, and you are in the habit of regularly testing your builds, you will be able to spot things like, hang on a minute, when I say put this LAM system here, uh, it was able to shoot down a certain amount of missiles before, you know, you know, before they came and killed me. And now they can't. Or now they do it faster. What's going on? Um, yeah, but if you don't test that, uh, you will get a horrible surprise when your, uh, when your craft is finished. And then you'll be like, oh, damn it. That's, that's no good. What happened? And um, number seven is a particular thing that I also am very bad with is take your time, don't rush. Uh, From the Depths is a video game, it's not homework, it's not a job. You are allowed to take your time, you're allowed to smell the mechanical roses, so to speak. You are allowed to, you are allowed to get comfortable inside the Rambot suit, so to speak. Um, and the main reason for that is that the more you rush a build, it's the same with anything in life, the more mistakes you'll make, which will end up costing more time in the long run. Don't rush, don't panic. If you're getting frustrated with the thing, you can walk away, take a break, come back to it later. And don't be upset if an update renders something obsolete. I see it quite often that uh, people stop playing from the depths or they don't, or they stay away from it for a while because um, they're tired of updates like kind of ruining a plan they had or rendering a whole build obsolete. I would, like, uh, suggest is the wrong word. I have learned myself to kind of embrace that um, and see it as an opportunity to try something else. So, what's a good example of this? Trying to th think of one. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but it's like, if you have a craft which uh, the whole craft hinges on a particular thing working a certain way, and then an update comes and blows that 
out of the world. Oh, I just remembered one. Uh, spin block propellers. So putting wings on spin blocks and essentially getting a very powerful free form of propulsion. I've made several craft uh, that I've used in campaigns that rely on that. Uh, that got patched out, so I'm like, eh, okay. I guess I'll have to uh, do something else. To be fair, they weren't that big, so... <laughs> um, yeah, maybe not the best example, but yeah, it's like an opportunity. I could try something else. I could put sails on them. I could actually grip my teeth, put a power system on them, and make them use the new propellers. So yeah, and... Um, uh, keeping the previous point in mind, don't rush and also test often and don't get upset when things, uh, when updates ruin your day. When in doubt, uh, keep it simple until it needs to be complicated. So that's a real helpful thing uh, with a large craft. And basically, your block layout, like, once you get the hang of it, you can of course go as crazy as you like. You can make holes which are insanely complicated shapes, you could do wacky uh, APS Tetris, you can... Uh, stack sub-objects on top of each other and just do crazy things like that. Um, you can, hell, you can just dive into the breadboard and the lure if you are so inclined. Uh, but, when in doubt, keep it simple, because then it's simple to fix if it breaks. If it's complicated, it's complicated to fix if it breaks. That's not a hard and fast rule, but it is a general trend. And it is one of the main reasons that I tend to build canoes, or at the very least, um, craft which are roughly the same uh, at the front as they are at the back. So that is a that is a prefab time saver. So what that means is that you build the stern and you've built the bow already. So that means you can just prefab the whole thing, slap it on the back, and there you go. Like, you're done. Uh, very simple, very easy. And that doesn't just apply to canoes, by the way. That applies to most things. And uh, speaking of things keeping it simple, um, when it comes to aesthetics... From the Depths has a lot of uh, aesthetics options, and uh, you can use deco, you can use, well, decorations, I mean, you can use mimics, you can shape your hull in a very sexy, realistic ways. Uh, now, more so than ever. But, if you want to keep it simple, and if you just want the thing to look slightly better than terrible, uh, two tools will absolutely save your bacon. The first one is the camo function, so just going into the V menu, and like putting in a specific camo URL, um, I really should um, like you know just hashtag camo something something, some floating somewhere, and I mo might post a link to this uh, in the description. Is the full uh, camo set, and you can make your own, and it doesn't have to be amazing. You can slap something together in paint, and um, your ship can still end up looking pretty good, provided you plan it out right. Uh, but speaking of paint, the paint tool. So if you hit the Z menu and you put the paint tool uh, on your uh, hotbar, uh, you can paint your craft really quickly. You could just uh, go out of build mode and just spray paint the whole thing really quickly. And that saves so much time with large craft because you can set the splash uh, of the paint tool to around 5 meter to... Uh, I think it's a 5 meter radius or maybe it's diameter, I don't know. Anyway, it allows you to paint things really quickly, and so you can see that on screen right now. Uh, with this battleship, the underside is painted a kind of uh, rust-proof red, uh, like real-life ships, and it just like, brrrr, paint, paint, throw paint, and just saves so much time, because you can imagine going into build mode and painting that manually, it would take a year and a half. And we ain't got that time of time, you only live once. And speaking of only living once, actually not really, well... You will make mistakes. It's almost guaranteed, like, even with people who are extraordinarily good at From the Depths, which I'm not saying I am. I am... I am probably... I am possibly above average, slightly, on a good day. Uh, but even the very best uh, people, like, the ones who can just make incredible things that are, like, functional and beautiful and stuff like that, even they make mistakes and that's okay. So don't get upset. And I say that because I get upset with my spaghetti when I make mistakes. And I shouldn't. It's okay. It's how you learn. And um, that's basically it. So yeah, just, just a quick run over the points again. Everyone has a different definition of what constitutes big. So uh, learning how to build small first is very helpful for building things big. Uh, planning ahead. Um, will help you avoid uh, mistakes. 
Uh, build and optimize individual systems first, so you know uh, what they all do, and they can you can make sure that they do what they you, what you want them to. Uh, make prearranged prefabs ahead of time because it's a beautiful time saver. Uh, test often because that's the best way to make sure everything you've done works. Take your time, don't rush. Um, uh, you will make more mistakes and have to do more emergency repair work if you do that. Uh, when in doubt, keep it simple uh, because. Simple things are simpler, they're quicker, and just simple basics are the way to go, generally. Uh, aesthetics, never forget the camo and paint tool. It just saves a lot of time. And you will make mistakes, and that's okay. So on that jolly note, uh, I hope this was helpful. And if it wasn't helpful, I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was entertaining and helpful, because that would be the best scenario. And thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and this fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.